Welcome back. We are going to do the very popular, everyone loves it, pin test. You know how much I love Pinterest and how I see great ideas, but sometimes those ideas fall flat. I waste time, I waste money, I waste emotional drama. This week we found something that I think is going to be pretty good, might be perfect for your next party. Take a look. This is the Pinterest find I found. I really like this idea. I move over. There it is. You uh, see that? A customized plate there. Supposed to be super easy. So what you do, these are the steps according to Pinterest. You buy plates at the dollar store and honestly these are dollar store plates. I kept the price tag right on there. Plates, cups, bowls, you want them to be glass ceramic, okay, and white so that you can write on them. So let's say you're having a holiday party and you want to put a message to your guests. You know, these are your loved ones, so you want to write things like that or, can you read that? <laughs> maybe you want to say, who invited you? Or maybe nog me. How do you spell nog? Okay, so these are their messages. These aren't very good messages. This is a great thing. When you do painting or any kind of craft, what you want to do is not make mistakes that won't go away. So let's say we want to be a little nicer than that. We would never write that on our plates. Welcome to my house. Go away. Come on. All right, but the thing is, you can redo any one of these things. So you write what you think you want. It didn't look very pretty or it wasn't very nice. You just remove it, okay? and start again. So what I'm actually going to do is let's say I have a party and everybody has their own spot and this is where Bob sits right on the plate. This is where Sue sits, right? This is where Anna sits. All right, that's how you do it. You can do any kind of color, but really the best color is black against the white. It looks kind of classy. But what I'm going to do is write what the next thing I'm going to do here is a cookie recipe. So I'm going to write Cecilia's pumpkin cookie, okay? And I'm gonna put all of the ingredients on there. I'm gonna do it fast because we don't have a heck of a lot of time to show you. But I just wanna let you know I already did one. Okay, so you write what you want on the recipe or on the plate. In this case, I wrote the recipe for my cookies and put it on the plate. What you do then is I'm just gonna put it in the oven for, or next to the oven, 30 minutes at about 150 degrees. That's gonna turn this stuff that we're able to wipe off into something that's permanent. Okay, so while that's cooking, I'm gonna show you the actual recipe that we're talking about. I have a recipe, honest to goodness, from my actual grandma. She passed away a while ago, but when she died, I went to her house and we were looking through her things and we found her recipe box. It was like a shoe box of every single thing that she liked to cook. And this is one of her favorites. It's Cecilia's pumpkin cookie recipe. So the first thing we want to do is put the wet ingredients in. If you can see me all the way over here, that is pumpkin, shortening, and vanilla. Okay, and we're going to have all the exact amounts on the website. And then we're going to do our dry ingredients. Okay, this is going to be about to be a mess. So luckily you can see it on the, on the screen. You're going to put flour. Woo! Always a mess. Sugar. It can be brown sugar or it can be white sugar. That's up to you baking powder, baking soda, a little bit of salt, and a little bit of cinnamon. I like a lot of cinnamon, but you really don't need that much. Just a teaspoon of most of those ingredients, okay? There's also one beaten egg in there. So I'm gonna put this down here and mix it up. Look, pumpkin. And flour went everywhere just like I expected it to. So uh, that's how it goes. That takes about, I don't know, 10 minutes to put together. And as you can see, I've got flour everywhere. Now I made these, of course, already. So I'm going to pull these out. They just came out of the oven. The best part about these is that they're small and ugly. <laughs> it doesn't take much. You don't have to make them perfect. But this isn't done yet. The next part you want to do is the frosting. The whole thing about this is the frosting. What you want to do is about a cup of powdered sugar, okay? The powdered sugar, like I said, about a cup, and then a little bit of milk. And it's not that much milk. You have to kind of eyeball it, because you don't really want this to be frosting. I think you really want it more like icing. You want it to be kind of, kind of loose, because it kinda, you want it to drip over each cookie. And then, if you don't want to do this, you don't have to, but this is the way my grandma Cecilia always did it. She wants orange icing, right? So a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow, all right, to make these really pumpkin-y looking. 
All right, so what we want is orange. And again, you might have to play with this a little bit, but again, it's powdered sugar, one tablespoon of butter, a tiny bit of vanilla, like the cap full of vanilla, and then stir it till you get it to be nice and smooth. You are gonna have to keep playing with this to get it smooth. You want it to drip a little bit, okay? And since these are warm, it'll go on really nicely. So that's what they look like. It takes a little bit of time to frost the amount you're gonna have. You're gonna have a couple of dozen cookies, but you're gonna have a lot of cookies that are small. So even though there's nothing healthy about these, and you know me, I'm always on a diet, if you only have one, <laughs> yeah, right. If you only have one, you won't be doing too bad. Okay, so you put them together like this, and really the frosting's the whole deal because the cookie is not sweet at all. It's very kind of pumpkin-y. So that's what we do. So if you remember, I made that plate, and on the plate is the recipe. So these are my done ones. Take a look at my done ones. And instead of putting them on this orange plate, I'm going to put them on the plate with the recipe. So there's half a dozen right there for whoever I'm giving them to. Probably my sister because she loves pumpkin cookies too here. But here it says Cecilia's pumpkin cookies. Here are the uh, dry ingredients, the wet ingredients, what the frosting is, and bake at 375. In my opinion, this is a pin test that is a total pin win. This was easy. This is good. The only problem is the calories, but we did that spinning, 700, so we can have like seven or eight of these and be just fine. When we come back, we're gonna make some mushroom risotto with a chef, and I'll clean up some of this flour. <laughs>